All right, Shalom, I'm Akim. This is a high spirit way in Judah of the GMS Mississippi Camp. Giving our honor and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Kodas. I also want to give double honors to our apostles, the great millstone, Ruel. I want to say peace and blessings to the house of David the elect. Okay? And I just want to um, get into uh, a, a conversation, man, a vent, or, you know, just a discussion about how we should be in Babylon, man. Because the Most High gave us laws, statutes, and commandments, all right, through through his prophet, through his prophet Moses, man, all right, King Moses, all right, the prophet Moses, okay. But in, in this time, he did, he didn't just give us the laws, statutes, and commandments, all right. He gave us um, scriptures for growth as men. It's not only men, but men of the Lord. And not only is men of the Lord, but to orient us as princes, man. He gave us things for class. To have class, man. Princes and people of nobility have class. Okay? Okay? But another thing that he gave us, he gave us laws for discipline, man. Ordinances for discipline. All right? Ordinances for self-control in which if we were to be in Babylon... If we didn't have those ordinances, we wouldn't survive this truth, man. All right? And a lot of brothers, you know, they don't they don't follow those ordinances, man. All right? But there are key scriptures. <clears throat> and I'll tell you this. The book of Sirach is a book of survival in Babylon, man. You can follow the book of Sirach, and it does literally save your life. Okay? You can follow the book of Sirach. <clears throat> and an example is, prove thy soul in thy life. And that which is evil for it, give not that unto it, man. That that scripture will save your life. And it goes to show you that we have liberty in your house shy to, to experiment with things, man. Oh, you know, I, I drunk. I got nice before a count. I'm not going to do that again. I had a headache the whole time I was in count. Okay. But brothers proved himself, man. Brothers dealt with certain type of women and they prove like man, I can't deal with that type of female, man. I can't I can't go on that platform. You know, it, it, it's all about growth, man. Another scripture that uh, that'll save your life and allow you to grow if you follow it is the scripture where it says in Sirach, um, go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from that appetite, man. Alright? See it's more than walking around saying, uh, I don't eat pork. Or, you know, you know, I don't eat seafood. You see guys in the, in the public wearing fringes all the time now. It's almost 2020. A lot of people know who they are. All right. But <clears throat> are, are they do they have growth? Are they grown, man? <laughs> you have to have growth. All right. To be grown. Are they mature? OK. You have a lot of Israelites who are in the, the mindset of boys. OK. They're like boys in the world, man. Men have self-control. And going back to Proverbs, you have to have rule over your spirit. Now, <clears throat> that's not to um, take away from, you know, a man's liberty. We all have our things. But, you know, we, we are leaders. Even if you are not in a position of leadership within your camp, you still are an example on how to conduct yourself as an Israelite man. People have to look at your behavior and say, hey, man, hey, he... You know he he's he's faultless. Even if you're not literally flawless or faultless, you have to appear to them and, and to men. You have to appear that way in front of men. Okay. All of a sudden, my voice wants to get raspy. Once I open up this video, my voice wasn't like this before I started recording this video. Okay. <clears throat> but the, the point is, all right, we have to grow, and I say we because I'm a part of this walk too. And I can tell you from experience that you can't grow if you only follow the law, statutes, and commandments, man. You have to go deeper, man. Hey, that's why it says, I think it's in um, Sirach 4 and Wisdom of Solomon. Also, it's in Wisdom of Solomon. That the, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter. That the beginning of wisdom is discipline. I mean, it starts off keeping a law. But ultimately, <clears throat> you have to unplug from any behavior that clouds your mind. Anything that you can overdo or do in general that makes your mind cloudy is going to keep you from growing in the spirit. It's going to keep you from growing as a man. You have to, we have to be men, all right? 
we have to learn to interpret our situations. Is this situation forcing me to rise to the challenge, to fight, to better myself, to fight to be in a better situation? Or is it drawing out, is it purging a weakness from me? All right? We have to, we have to learn how to grow. Part of growth is looking at a woman and understanding, yeah, she look good, she make my juices run, she got my blood flowing, but that type of woman ain't right for me, man. We have to understand, we have to know that. At a certain point in your life, in this truth, you can't be a boy and just react and then run into a brick wall and be frustrated. And then you get up and do the same thing the next day, man. That means you're not growing, man. You can't be a brother that keeps doing the same having the same folly or gets into the same situation every week or every other week you get into the same predicament man that means you didn't learn from it prove that soul in our life man your soul is you okay and we all do dumb stuff we've all made mistakes man we've all had poor decisions all right but it's two things you gotta have you gotta have hindsight and foresight you gotta learn how to reflect and grow, and we're in a time that's so uh, we're in a time where we're so targeted by Satan that you can't even have hindsight. I know an elder in the D Dallas camp said that years ago. It's not even about hindsight. You just gotta be prudent, man. You gotta use your freaking thinking cap, man. All right, you have to use your freaking thinking cap. If I do this, I might die. I'm putting my life in jeopardy, or I'm putting brothers' lives in jeopardy. But it feels good. Every time I've done this, nothing positive happened. It was always negative. But because it feels good, I'm going to do it again. All right? That's a sign of lack of growth, man. We have to grow. All right? And Kemp, we have to grow. And we got to let the scripture speak. All right? You know? Another thing... You know, when we when we first came into this truth, there's a reason why Revelations, I believe it's the third chapter, you know, it was telling it was Yahweh was admonishing the church. Remember thy first love, man. Because when you are newly married to wisdom, hey man, you a lot you can't wait to get home and start reading. As soon as you woke up, you started reading, man. Wisdom was your comforter, man. You didn't care about nothing else but this that sincere milk, man. But as time progressed. And then hope got deferred, other things became your comforter, man. You can never drink enough liquor. Your situation is still gonna be there the next day when you sober up, along with the headache. You can never have sex with enough women. As soon as you ejaculate, you're probably gonna be depressed again, you know? Or after a while, that woman that you got feelings for, you're gonna start seeing her imperfections, her flaws are gonna come out, and Satan is gonna come out, and you're gonna see, and you're gonna look for perfection within the next woman, man. All right? And that's time away from your real woman, which is Sophia, man. All right? It's time progressing this truth. Sophia became that, that lonely housewife that's in the kitchen drinking wine by herself because her husband is out chasing tail, man. All right? Nah, we gotta go back to our first love, man. That excitement where, although we caught hell when we got home, I mean, although we caught hell, before we got home, when we made it to the house, going back to Wisdom of Solomon 8 chapter, we, repo we reposed ourselves with wisdom. King Solomon personified wisdom as a woman, and he said, when I got home, roughly paraphrasing, I reposed myself with her. When you repose, you rest. All right, you find solace, all right? A lot of men go to prison and they find solace in, in, a, in the word, man. All right, but you have the oil along with the word. You have the understanding of the word. So we have to go back to Sophia being our woman. When we when we make it home and we first get up and we make love to her, man. I mean, I know it sounds you know strange me saying that, but we have to go back as men to our comforter being the word. Yeah, we want to better ourselves. Yes, we 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 have access to drink. All right, but a hey, moderation is the key. All right. Yeah, we have access to, to travel a little bit. You know, moderation is the key. Yeah, a brother might not tell you that you can't do certain things. There's, there's not a sin. You know, there's no law, no sin. But you have to know how to not do it, man. Okay. 
we have to go back to our comforter being the word, man. Because as men, as men in his flesh, Esau already set up the matrix that, the, you know, he's already studied other empires. Esau has already studied other kingdoms. And when people were oppressed, they usually uh, rebel and they would, you know, attempt to overthrow the government or whatever it may be. But in this setup, Esau gave you all types of religion. It's a bar on every corner. It's a club. It's a strip club. All right. He gave, you know, and all these sports bar and grills where it's a hundred TVs in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, within the establishment. And there's all types of sports. He gave you entertainment to, to um, distract your mind from realizing that you are a slave. He gave you all types of uh, ex forms of escapisms so you could mentally divert into another dimension while, you're, but, but while your existence is to be a hand and feet in his kingdom. So it's natural to want to repose to some liquor, you know, be out all the time, knowing you gotta escape to the to, to that hell, that same hell the next morning. But the thing that but the two thirds can do that, man. The two thirds are stressed out, they catch a hell. That's why they're taking a cigarette break every 15 minutes. They gotta hit that nicotine. Then when you hit when you see them hit that nicotine, you see that stress leave them, all right? The elect could drink as soon as they get home. I mean, not the elect. Two thirds, they could drink as soon as they get home. That's why a lot of your coworkers, man, they got, they gut it out, man. They got this big gut, man. All right? Because they repose themselves with that liquor, with food. They'll sit and watch, watch sports, man, or watch TV, man, or watch movies. They can do that. So, what makes you the elect? What makes you elite? All right? We not no damn racks. All right? Uh, using the options that Esau gave us to blind us from the fact that we're slaves. Now, we know we're in captivity, but our comfort is wisdom. It says wisdom strengthen a, a man more than, uh, what's that, 10 mighty men? All right, something like that, Some roughly paraphrasing. So what strengthens us, man? All right, what? that's why it says what? The, uh, in Corinthians, though my outer man perish, my inward man is renewed day by day, man. It's renewed by what? Wisdom, so feel, man. We actually have something that strengthens our spirit. It's not about your flesh. You can hit the gym every day, but if you if you're not reposing yourself with so feel, then you 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 got a weak spirit, man. You're easily you're gonna easily be entangled in Babylon, man. And we have to pray to stay focused because everything and every movement in Babylon is there to. Rock you back to sleep, man. Make you forget the mission. Every adversity that say you push your way, his job is to make you distracted from your purpose, man. There's a reason why a lot of women is not a lot of women are not giving you a number or you have their number, and all of a sudden you run into a wall or she stopped texting you. Sometimes she's playing mind games, but ultimately in the spirit, it's just that the most high put it in her spirit to not deal with you. Because it's all about the mission, man. You have to know how to exist with, without your flesh. Even when your flesh is calling to deal with a woman or it's calling for some type of comfort. Hey, we have to learn how to be soldiers and discipline ourselves to the best of our ability so we can still maintain ourselves when we're deprived of certain things, man. Because deprivation, it, ma it makes your spirit stronger, man. The reason why you see men in this society, they're so effeminate. In these cities, man, they're so effeminate in the 21st century because they have comforts available to them 24 hours a day. You could you could call uh, Postmates <laughs> and get food delivered to you. You could work from home, all right. Work on your laptop and pay your rent, man, and pay your bills, all right. You don't have to work and fight and struggle for nothing. So now you have a, a, a effeminate energy about you. But when, when when adversity hits Babylon, those men are going to die from heart attacks, man. They're going to jump in, in women's lap and say, help me. Okay? All right? But, you know, I'm not going to uh, prolong this, man. But, hey, we have to, for one, grow in the spirit. All right? Ment hey, I believe as a man, we should mentally, physically, spiritually and uh, develop ourselves and even financially. Handle our finances and be responsible financially, man. But ultimately, in the spirit... Develop ourselves in the spirit and grow and reflect and build and learn, man. But also go back to wisdom being our comforter and being immersed in, in, in the um in in the prophecy in the prophecies, man. 
and heaven not hope in the kingdom, man. All right? And not hope that if we get our tax return and that's what your hope is or hope that, you know, she swings through, she follows through on a date, man. I mean, those are little goodies in the flesh. There's nothing wrong with that. But our ultimate hope is this word, man. It's the, the promise of the kingdom, man. And, and we being a part of that promise and we being heirs. But with that, I hope you brothers are edified. And to the next lesson, Shalom.